Welcome back, my fellow duplicates, to Oxygen Not Included. Today, we are taking the first look here at the tubular upgrade. It's a little upgrade that has just been released here into Oxygen Not Included, and it's going to change the way that we move throughout the base, and I think it's going to be pretty awesome. So I've set up a little bit of a, a new test lab here, and as you could imagine, I call it a test tube. <laughs> All right, so let me show you how this works. Over here, I have all of my little comfy beds. I also have some coal generators, and this is all all very nice and, and works in such a way that it these duplicates will live a very nice, long, happy life over here, albeit uh, potentially a little bit cold. Now, you guys may have noticed that I don't have a chamber with like some inert gas, be it like carbon dioxide or chlorine or... Uh, hydrogen or any of those where I store food is so that it doesn't go bad and I don't have to run power to the refrigerator because you know that would just be kind of a not necessarily a waste if you're just running it in a normal base but when I want to get my reports out accurately I don't want to run power that I don't need to run so that's why I use things like an outhouse and then I also do not run power to things like a refrigerator and that's also why I'm using coal generators and all of that good stuff because it doesn't require any pumps to run uh, reason being, though, is that the micro musher here has a new chunk of food that is available to us, and that is the berry sludge, and I think it's modeled directly after a fruitcake. So it is a mashed up bristleberry with an exceptionally long shelf life, meaning that the bristleberry sludge, or the berry sludge right here, unlike other foods, doesn't go bad. Let's run a real quick experiment here. We'll take your grandmother's bristleberry sludge fruitcake and we're going to move that over here just to see if it's going to go bad in this area. And then we'll take another one of these, right? And we'll kind of do it right up in this area. Kind of just saturate this area. If it's going to go any bad anywhere, it's going to be in an area with a lot of polluted oxygen or polluted water. Because, I mean, that's just a recipe for disaster, right? So we'll move that over there as well. So that's in the, you know, it's in the water. And then we will also cook up some other stuff here, like some fried mushrooms or something like that. Or how about gristleberry? There we go. How about some gristleberry? So if we take this gristleberry, you can see right off the bat, it says unrefrigerated. So it will spoil. We'll put that over here and you can see just how terrible that will be. Here's another spot right there. Ooh, they must be hungry. They picked it up already. First indication here, just by looking at the berry sludge, there's no indication that it needs to be refrigerated, unlike the gristle berry here where it says unrefrigerated and then pollution, exposure, and all of that stuff. I mean, the berry sludge is immune to everything. However, can you mark a berry sludge for compost? Is that new? Hmm. All right, so there goes the bristle berry. It won't go bad, but you can use it for compost. Hmm. Don't you want to eat that? The other advancement you see right here, as you see Bender moving up and down, or, or Zordberg, Zoidberg right there, kind of moving around, is that is a direct um, thing that came from Octo Jones. You can actually see it over here, which is hilarious. He says, you can make elevators now. Now, this isn't really uh, anything like it's just a manipulation of the game here where we're using ladders and then we're also using fire poles above it. And it just so happens that the animation doesn't happen for like jumping up and down. So your duplicates just kind of like slide up and down. So it's it's kind of like an elevator. I think it's hilarious. So I set that up inside the base here. That is not part of the update. It's just part of the last update. And we've found a way to make <laughs> <laughs> make an elevator out of it. So that's pretty cool. However, that leads us to the big part of this upgrade right here, and that is the transit tube system here. So there's three new pieces of equipment here. We have the tra transit tube access point right here, which allows duplicates to enter the tube and then go to whatever destination they want to head to. Then there is a transit tube chunk right here that will you know, basically allow them to travel through this tube. And then there is a chunk, which is kind of temporary art right now. It just looks like a little bridge, but that is a transit tube crossing. And that allows you to go through walls and floor tiles right there. So that way you can build this. Once you have the tube built, you can build that over it. So that way it blocks off the gas. In this case over here, we have 12.8 kilograms. And then over here on the right, it's 1.5. So the, the gases are not transferring between the two. Now, if you guys are uh, thinking about, you know, instantly right off the bat, yes, this is a way to make 
airlocks between two areas. So we now have a system that can be used to keep separate gases and we're going to experiment a little bit with that inside of this, this test lab here in this episode because I, I think that's pretty dope. Now I know what you're asking, where is that at in the research tree? Well, it is way, way over here. This is the highest tier item in the game at the moment. It's right up there with the duplicate traffic control and the valve miniaturization. So this is the highest tier stuff right now. So that is transit tubes and all of that stuff. You gotta go through all of this to get that. So that's, that's way up there. It also requires fair bit of plastic if you're going to set this thing up. If we take a look at the transit tube access point itself, that uses a refined metal. So there's a, you know only 400 for that, so it's not a large amount. The transit tube itself uses 100 plastic per tile, and then the transit tube crossing is just using, you know, metal ore, not, not refined, just metal ore, and that's only 200. So it's really not that expensive, but when you kind of refigure that, all of this stuff is something that has to be processed or everything except for the crossing needs to be processed. It is kind of expensive. Now, currently these access tube points right here use up 480 watts continuously. So if we take a look at the reports here, we'll see that the power usage is cranking up constantly. And that's this is the only stuff that is running right here. And as we take a closer look at this item right here, you can see that each one of these is designated to a duplicate. So you can see that kind of builds up and you get an idea of just how how many duplicates you can send away. So we just moved off another one. We, we have up to three charges and it takes a little bit of time for that to recharge. Now, as far as I can tell, this transit tube access point here does not actually move gas or anything like that. It launches the duplicate into the tube and then they move via magic to a different location. So. Let me just go ahead and demonstrate that. If I click on Bender here and I tell Bender to head on over to this storage station over here, which is on the right, this is a complete vacuum over here. There's absolutely nothing here. Okay, so let's follow Bender along his little trip here. So he stands on this pad, it charges up for a little bit, and then whoosh, there he goes. Now this is at just normal speed as far as the game is concerned. So you do move quite quickly. However, it does take a little bit longer to go around corners. And you'll see he moves right on over here and right away he can't breathe. This is a complete vacuum. No oxygen or any of that gas came out with it. Now one of the things to mention here is that it does, it is important how you route this tube. So right now, Bender has moved into a location where he cannot get out of because this transit tube access point here is not you know, directly connected to it. It kind of has a little platform that launches them up into the tube, which as you can see, this one actually does not work. So if I try to locate this guy or move him anywhere outside, back to where he came from, you can see that I'm not allowed to do that. So I'm gonna show you just how we set this up real quick. So if I deconstruct this building, right and i start to make some of these transit tubes one of the things that i want to show you here is that you can't necessarily just fold this tube right back on itself so moving up and then to the left is actually occupying these four tiles or shall we say the that's the arc you get even though this piece right here you can't just like go around not that that's like crazy important but it just means you can't go up over and then right back down so you kind of got to plan it out a little bit better than that so here we go, we'll just go up, over, down, and that will connect us to the transit tube access point right there. And then I'm going to use the transit tube crossing, and I'm just going to rotate that vertically, and I should be able to get out of there. Now don't confuse this with the power over there. If I actually go to the power overlay, you can see that there's no power points there. I'm sure by the time this update comes out, obviously they're gonna have some different art there, but you can see that's what it is right now. So Bender here should be able to move over here to the left now by using the access point. And a little bit of oxygen like flowed into this area. Just for you know the sake of it, I'm gonna take this back to a vacuum. Now at this point, it's worth mentioning that these transit tube access points consume that power continuously. So, I mean, it's just sucking down the power as it is right now. Now, this has happened a couple times in the past and they've changed the way the power is used or consumed by the time it actually comes out. So I'm not sure if that's going to be final or not. 
And I have, a, I have a fair feeling that it's not going to be final. I mean, it does consume a lot of power, but that seems like a lot, even for end game. But, I mean, don't get me wrong. We end up generating a lot of power at the end of the game. And there's a lot of different ways to generate power. So I don't know if that is going to be continuous or not. But it's something to strategize, something to keep in mind. That you may not want to run a ton of, ton of these access points. Or you really got to pay attention to what you're plugging it into. But as you can see right here, I cut the power to this. And it's slowly bleeding out the amount of power that is, you know, available to this unit. Or so I say, the amount of times that this thing can actually move. So just out of curiosity, I wonder if I can... So let's see if I can move over there and actually get out. Even with it disconnected, so long as it still has one of those green charges on it. Let's move him back over here to the right. We'll see that he won't be able to get back out because it doesn't have any power connected to it. So now can you move to the left? No, you can't. And at what point can he move to the left? Not now. Not until that thing reaches the first green little exclamation mark, I think. Hey, yeah. Once it got past that first little dot, now he can move out. I'll cut the power again and try to get him out of there. Okay, so the power has been cut now, but there's still a little left, little charge left in this unit. And it doesn't look like Bender is capable of moving out of there, so there needs to be power pumping to that in order for it to work. Now that, now that I've connected the power, yes, he can get out. Okay, so it's really important to keep that power available. So another good example here is that you don't need to have an access point on the other end of the tube. That This thing can transport you just to the end of an empty tube so long as it has a safe place to land. So I'm going to send Zoidberg here over to get some water. And you'll see she goes up on her little elevator. They're kind of waiting. There they go. If we follow Zoidberg here, down it goes. And on over to the right, you can see it exits over here by the tube, or the, sorry, the pitcher pump. So the access point is over here in this case. So you can really think about how you want to arrange your tubes, and it really changes kind of that, that efficiency of, your, of the movement, I guess, inside of your base. You can really try to think, okay, so this is my primary way of moving into this area, and then maybe you have a backup way of getting out of here if this access you know, this transit tube access point is down for whatever reason. Maybe we ran out of power. So then you can have like a door over here, but it's only available to leave the area and then kind of like jog back on over here and then take a ladder up and go back in. So, you know, just let's just lay that out for the sake of it. So I guess what we're doing here is we're setting up an emergency exit. So this means you can only go out. Now there is no in and out access as far as this tube is concerned, right? It, there's no arrows. Just kind of, they figure it out and go. So you can only come out of here, but you can't go back in. And if we wanted to have an emergency entrance to their home base, we could just do this little number. And that is only available to go in. So you can't go out. So along with the new food and the transit tube system here, the last thing that they're working on is some performance improvements as far as the base is concerned for larger bases and all that stuff. And they're saying potentially you might see around a 25% increase as far as your base performance. Now, they're also saying that you're potentially going to see a hit here if you are opting into the early you know, access point of this game because they're trying to collect some more data and stuff like that or something like that. There's there's some other things going on that's actually working to be a performance impact or have a negative performance impact for for testing. You get the idea. It's It should get better for those of you that are experiencing the slideshow. But what I think is really cool about this is this is something that we are actually talking about it a while ago on this channel. So I'm sure it had come up in many other discussions as well. But you can see right here, uh, German Degev right here said, oh, and I really need some kind of automatic item transport. And it was like, oh, like a vacuum tube thing. That would be fun. And this like spawned a, a very long discussion all about an idea of potentially having, you know, some sort of thing that's going to be a tube concept because they already have liquid pipes. So while we can't necessarily just move ore and, you know, they just drop it into a tube and that tube moves that that item from one end to the other, what you can do is have your duplicates grab something and then go through the tube 
and end up on the other end with that same item in their hands. Because it's only moving duplicates, it's not moving the items. So in this situation, let's go ahead and set a sweep command for a little bit of the stuff that's right here. So these duplicates should come down here, grab whatever they need, and they're going to go and throw it in some of these storage compactors. So we can see here that Bender picked up 615 kilograms of dirt. And then off he goes. And you can see he's still holding on to that dirt while he's moving through the tube. Now I have had some situations where they actually drop whatever it is they're holding mid-transport, especially when they go around like some crazy corners. But for the most part, they seem to hold on to it pretty good. And I'm sure that's something that'll be worked on as the, you know, the game moves into its actual update. So you can see here like Zoidberg is actually holding this, but holding him behind him so it doesn't like, the art isn't in front of the tube. So if we kind of speed this up, you can see these duplicates are moving around, moving pretty good. For the most part, they're just moving dirt right now. However, we can see Zoidberg over here, eh, dropped a little bit of sand inside of the storage compactors. So that's pretty awesome, I like this, this is really fun. <laughs> However, let's go ahead and test kind of an emergency situation. So we're going to deconstruct a power wire over here and see if our emergency exit works. So Bender over here has now moved into this area. However, no longer has a way to get out. So uses the little emergency manual airlock down here and will path his way all the way back on over here to the left. So you can see just how much of a time saver using that tube is compared to just running around normally. Now there's one last thing I noticed in this update right here that wasn't actually in the patch notes at all, and that has to do with Natha. Now, we've used Natha here for a couple of updates to create airlocks because it builds vertically and doesn't actually like flow side to side. Well, guess what? If I go ahead and paint down Natha right here, guess what? It flows like water now. So it's no longer doing the magical vertical building thing that we had previously. So for those of you that with with Natha airlocks, like the ones I just put into my Megabase challenge, well, guess what? You're probably going to have to rethink that and potentially work towards using something like the transit tube access points to go between areas of, you know, isolation. And on one final note here, it's that since these tubes required to be made out of plastic, there is a melting point of 76.9 degrees Celsius. So there might still be reasons for liquid locks using naphtha or any of those other oil high temperature, you know, things to isolate areas of extreme temperature from other areas while still maintaining a vacuum. But you're gonna still have to use liquid locks in a different manner in order to make that happen. Because otherwise your tubes would just melt and that wouldn't be good. Okay, so here's some other things I noticed. The transit tube itself is like negative five decor per tile. So you can see in some areas right there, it's actually quite negative. So you might have to compensate for these tubes that are running around. I suppose there's still yet one more thing to mention is that there is an enable and disable as far as, you know, turning on or off your transit tube access via automation, which makes me wonder if you lose charges if it's disabled. Let me go and find out. Dun, 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 dun. Signal switch, it's enabled. What if we turn it off? Yeah, you start to lose those charges. You could do things like an SR latch or something like that for this tube access point so it, it turns on when they come into the area and then it turns off when they go to leave the area by using, you know, a little floor or a weight plate right down here. Or you could just kind of keep it nice and simple and just use like a buffer gate with enough time on it. So, so long as you don't have stuff that's built up right on top of it. Oh no! So if this goes active, we can just say, it'll stay active for 30 seconds or something like that. And that's how long they have to get out of the area before they're locked in. <laughs> Let me just go ahead and sweep this real quick and we'll see this work. All right, so they just left. It's still enabled and it's gonna be enabled for a little bit. There we go. So they've arrived. Bender fell asleep on the actual point itself and then left a bunch of sand there. What a... Oh, oh my gosh, the duplicates, seriously, you make my examples so hard. Why do you do this to me? All right, so there we go. And we can see that this is now working. A decent, easy, simple little example. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Found a bug. <laughs> uh, nope, there, there they go. Hmm, 
seems like I found a little bug right there. They should be going to that and, and heading out because it's still enabled. So that is one bug that I just found. The other bug I found is that you don't really want to take this test uh, <laughs> transit tube and build it underwater. Uh, what I've noticed, at least here in this preview stage of the game, for those of us that are doing the early adopter sort of, you know, test this thing out, work out the bugs, I found that building that underwater uh, creates a memory leak and it really puts a damper on your frame rate. So if you're serious about your base, you might want to avoid doing that but you can also test it out to see if they fix it with certain updates, you know, just something to be aware of. But hey, that's the whole point of being an open tester. So there you have it, guys. That is the look at the new tubular upgrade. I like it. I like the little, you know, being able to transport these guys around is absolutely awesome. Reminds me of like Futurama and all that stuff, as you can tell. And I think it's going to be a whole lot of fun. And I really look forward to putting it into my base here. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you guys have found this video somewhat informative or helpful, maybe even a little enjoyable. If I've earned your subscription, then thank you so much for that. Have a great day, guys. Stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar out.